Hi, today I'm going to demonstrate a me one method of creating a Z-Wave temperature controller for the Samsung SmartThings home system. Uh, I will be controlling the Pentair MasterTemp 400. I spoke to Pentair and the engineer I talked to said that Pentair were not going to be going down the home system Z-Wave route but creating their own system which is standalone which is not exactly what I wanted. So I managed to find the um, manual online for the MasterTemp 400. As you can see they have a, a facility called Remote Control Connections which is um, a fireman's switch and if you look at the drawing just here there are two terminals which Um, if you connected to a dry contact relay, you could turn the heater on and off. You set, you set the heater in an on mode, so it's on all the time, and then you control it being turned off by opening these contacts. The contacts are a pair of jumpers, then just here, these two yellow wires. So you unplug those, and just plug into those with a pair of wires going to your dry contact relay. It's very important that it is a dry contact relay and not a powered relay, uh, as you, you only need to open and break that, or op open and close those wires. I've been controlling the on and off of the heater uh, for a while now, just using this um, dry contact relay, which is Z-Wave. Uh, unfortunately, the only function you can do this is uh, you can't men monitor the temperature. You can just turn the heater on or off, which has been fine up to now. But I wanted to be able to monitor the temperature at the same time and determine whether it needed to be on or off. It's very important that when connecting to the fireman switch on your Pentair heater, that you use an isolation relay to m ensure that there are no voltage ends up on those contacts going to your fireman switch. It's very easy to do, you get a basic um, 24 volt AC relay with isolated contacts and you just strap that across the isolated relay that I'm using to turn the heater on and off via Z-Wave at the moment. The method I've chosen for controlling the temperature of the pool is with the train uh, AC controller. Um, the reason I picked this controller is because it has the ability to uh, input an exterior temperature sensor. So as you can see on here, if you use the RS1 terminals, the temperature sensor overrules the internal sensor of the controller and you can run the control purely from a temperature, external temperature sensor. With that I've picked a simple um, temperature sensor that I picked up off Amazon uh, very cheaply and the method I'm going to use for that is I've got a pneumatic connector which I'm going to drill and screw into the pipe from the pole to the pump and put the sensor into there, into the water flow. The reason I'm sensing it there is there's no way I can get wires to the pool and have the sensor sensing the, the temperature in the pool. I can only do it from water coming from the pool, which uh, is okay only when the pool is running. Um, and I wouldn't want to be controlling the temperature if the pool was off anyway, so this is as best as I can do. The uh, temperature controller I managed to pick up off eBay for $50. You'll need a 24 volt power supply, some suitable wiring to run the power supply to the controller. And if you need to extend the temperature sensors wires, um, thermocouple wiring, well, it's not thermocouple wire, it's a temperature wire, thermostat wire.
Okay, I've connected everything up temporarily. So I've got the power supply into the unit and the temperature sensor. I've just got in some cool water at the moment. This is actually the temperature sensor specification that I use. Again, I found that off Amazon. The uh, unit is already plumbed in and paired with the Z-Wave for the house. So I can see that the um, full temperature is reading. Uh, let me just bring that up. Let's see, 61 degrees. 61 degrees. And that's because it's in there, not because it's outside. So I'm going to bring that out and let it warm up. There's, um, it sent, it senses quite slowly. Uh, that's just to stop um, it flicking your AC on and off. Uh, it only samples every few seconds. So that temperature will take a little while to stabilize. Uh, and that's, that's a good thing, because you don't want the pump to be continuously flicking on and off just through random fluctuations in temperature. You can see it's already starting to climb, but it'll only jump every five or six seconds or so. And already that's starting to jump as well. I had hoped to um, create an animation that would um, control the pool from the uh, temperature sensor directly through animations. Uh, that doesn't seem to be possible. I can't seem to get uh, a node from the controller to actuate the um, dry contact relay switch that I've got. This is not a problem. All I need to do is uh, run a pair of wires um, from the AC controller to the uh, fireman switch contacts and just override the uh, contacts that are on the on the uh, uh, dry contact relay. By placing the wires from the AC controller in parallel across the dry contact relay, that gives me the ability to turn the pool on and off should the dry contact relay be off. But it does give me the ability to manually override uh, the AC controller with the dry contact relay and just turn the heater on as and when I want. One thing to note, uh, this is a, a four millimeter temperature sensor. This is a four millimeter pneumatic connector which has an o-ring seal in there. What I had to do though uh, is drill this back end down to the o-ring um, to ensure that the sensor can go all the way through rather than come up against a stop. Um, just got to be careful with that because the drill can grab and then go in and damage the o-ring in there but I managed to do it quite satisfactorily. So now what I've got to do is drill and tap the hole. Okay, so I've turned the pull pump off. I'm going to set the selector to waste. <coughs> I'm going to drill my hole. I'm going to pick a suitable spot where um, it's not going to get hit or damaged. So I'm just going to drill in here and get a bit of water out of my bag. six millimeters what I'm gonna do is just gonna thread the hole in here nice and slowly there you go get all that bit of swarf out of there and screw in my connector may need to put a bit of PTFE or something around that to seal it, but I don't think I will. Um, but try not to do it in too hard. And then carefully push in my sensor to the collar like that. That's it. Done. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to run the pool to waste um, briefly 
just to make sure that if there was any swarf um, entered into the pipe there, it's not going to go into the filter or the heater. Filter, turn the back on, all back on, job done. Okay, it's all hardwired in uh, and everything's functioning uh, perfectly. So now I can control and monitor the heat of the pool via my Z Wave system. I hope you found this very instructional and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, bye.